Okay, good. We're uh, we're now live. So I think we should be good to go. If not, I'm sure I will be getting some tweets or something soon saying you can't do it. Uh, welcome. I'm excited to be back. I missed the last webcast. I was uh, on family leave, but we it's, all missed you. Did you really, Kevin? Because there were no, there was no cake, there was no anything. I, I was there quite were a lot disappointed. Of technical difficulties are a lot That's, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. So I'm here now to run the uh, the webcam. Uh, but uh, excited to have everyone. This is going to be a really fun Logic Apps webcast. We're excited to show you some of the amazing things that are coming. Uh, so excited, in fact, that we're actually going to switch the order. We're going to let Kevin go first and talk about all the cool things that are coming. Um, so for those of you who haven't joined before, I'm Jeff Holland. Uh, and I'm Kevin Lamb. Yep, and we are on the Logic Apps team. Uh, which is an amazing service in preview right now in Azure. I actually noticed actually before we start, it looks like there was almost a Twitter contest, by the way, uh, of different people tweeting how many minutes until the webcast started and us retweeting all of them. Uh, oh, good. And Glenn, we are, we are apparently live because Glenn is interacting with us over Twitter. So thank you everyone for joining. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's have Kevin start with going over some of the coming features. So I'm gonna switch this so that you can all see that screen. Um, oh, I hate it when it doesn't just show up by default. Okay, here we go. Let's switch to that. And Kevin, I'm just going to let you run with it, and then we're right. going to show you some demos from there. Awesome. And so actually, as usual, we do our... While you're uh, talking, I want to make sure that yeah, it, it does like three pop-ups to make sure that I'm sure I want to share. I, I just want to let it okay. know I'm sure I want to share. Excellent. Okay. So as we do with every webcast, we let you know what's new and then what's coming up. Uh, so the first thing about what's new, let's go that. Um, oh, let's, let's click. Yep. So first, webhooks. Yay! We finally have webhooks. Uh, so you can actually start using webhooks in Logic Apps. Uh, there are a couple of, of uh, nice features that come along with webhooks. Uh, first is that you get static endpoints that are independent of subscription ID and resource group name. That means that uh, when you look at the uh, URL that you're you're posting to it, you don't you're not exposing the subscription ID and resource group, and actually when you do a resource move of your Logic app, that endpoint name is not affected by that resource move. Um, and if we hadn't already announced we do resource I think we announced that the last time. Yeah, yeah. So we do resource moves in Logic apps. Uh, so along with that, we actually have a SaaS style authentication for that endpoint. So then when you uh, go ahead and get your list endpoint URLs for your triggers, you'll actually get a SaaS URL that uh, you can call independently um, and the auth is actually built into that URL. So you, you can have uh, your custom code actually now starting calling uh, your, your logic apps. So along with that, that also means that you get um, the full access to the headers and the body can be any format you want. So before we had to prescribe the shape of the body that was going in and you didn't get access to those headers, now you just get the raw HP request and you get to go and, and party on all those details. It's really cool. I was actually playing with it yesterday uh, because there's a lot of services like GitHub or SendGrid or tons that let you subscribe to different events and set up a webhook. And before it was wonky because you'd either have to use a listener or you'd have to let someone give you the off stuff. But now you just grab this link, you copy paste it in, and you can have Logic Apps trigger when a GitHub commit happens or when a send grid event happens and all these things, even if there's not necessarily a connector, right? Because you can use these webhooks that's becoming kind of standard. And that's uh, highlighted that second one, which is the actual HTTP mm -hmm. webhook trigger. So you can specify as a trigger an HTTP webhook where you can go ahead and just subscribe to something like GitHub and start getting events from, from GitHub. Um, uh, so that's that's great. Now we actually can do a little bit of quick work in, in our logic apps. Mm -hmm. And finally, synchronous response. So if you have a, a manual trigger or if you want to respond to a, a, uh, an actual HTTP webhook trigger, you can send a response back from your, your uh, Logic app. Uh, so then you, you essentially have now request response uh, uh, being able to be done inside Logic apps. Uh, yeah, so and I'm, if I'm understanding this right, Kevin, and so this would be able to be a much more robust and a replacement to the current model where you have to set up an HTTP listener app manage it, hope that it doesn't have any issues, and do all those things. Now the engine itself supports this natively where you can do HTTP request response out of the box in a robust scalable way. Exactly right. So you don't you don't have to deploy the HTTP listener anymore. Uh, you use that, you, you add a manual trigger to your, to your workflow definition and you put a response, you can do a synchronous response on that request, and it's all handled by the engine instead of these external connectors. Very cool, and also I should mention too, by the way, let me make sure that this is actually still valid. 
Uh, but if you have questions throughout this webcast, we do have the questions and answer feature turned on. Yes, with uh, Google Hangout. Uh, and so if you go ahead and follow the link to the Google Hangout at any point during this, uh, feel free to ask questions and we'll take some time at the end to answer those. Awesome. So let's see what's next. Let's do it. Next, new metrics for Logic App. So um, one of the things that some customers were running into was um, that their Logic Apps, depending on the plan you're using, could be throttled if you are if you start going over some limits that we've indicated in, in the uh, in the business plan that you have for that logic app. So now that you can actually see inside of your metrics to see if your logic app has been throttled, so you know why certain behaviors have been happening if it's if it's going slower than you expected. Uh, you can look at those those uh, events and then bump up your plan if needed or stop pushing so much work at that point. Okay. So what's coming up next? Very exciting. More on webhooks. Uh, so the 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 first thing that we have on webhooks that's still coming next is schema validation on manual triggers. So now, when you um, in the future, when you'll be when you add that manual trigger to the to the logic app, we'll give you a means by which you can describe the schema, and we'll validate those incoming requests based on that schema uh, that you described in that uh, manual trigger. Uh, webhook action. So now you can take we we described the HP uh, webhook trigger. In the middle of your workflow, you can actually have a, a webhook action that you can go out and then have that workflow wait for that responses to come back from the, uh, the webhook that you're subscribed to. And then finally, uh, so we have these capabilities in the in the language. We will be exposing them in the designer as well, so that you can you can uh, have first class interaction with the designer doing webhook stuff. Alerts. Uh, we promised that the last time. It's still coming. There's just uh, so back end work that we still need to do, but alerts is, is on our short backlog. And improvements to Logic Apps Designer. So one of the big things that we're, we're imminently going to release in the, in, the, in the coming weeks is the new Logic Apps uh, Designer that uh, is going to be a great experience. And along with that, one of the things that's going to, to uh, one of the improvements we have is managed APIs. So today, all the connectors that you have, you have to go ahead and deploy them yourself. You may not re realize you're actually deploying them because the designer may do that for you in the background. Um, but uh, we're moving so that all the out-of-box connectors are going to be managed connectors. And uh, we actually will manage those connectors for you. And all you have to do is do the uh, connection configuration management. Um, auto discovery of custom APIs. So as you build in the, in the new API app, uh, model, if you go ahead and create a, a custom API app, uh, it could be a web app or mobile app, but if it has a Swagger endpoint, which is essentially the uh, a URL on your API definition property, um, the designer will automatically discover if those are in your subscription that they're there and give it first class support in the designer so uh, it looks like a, a first class out of box experience for that uh, connector. Um, and for those things that uh, you want to reach out to, a third-party SaaS system that uh, has its own API in Swagger. Uh, we give you a new experience for being able to specify HP with Swagger, and you'll get, it'll look like, again, a first-class experience for interacting with that API and designer. Yeah, I, I really like this HTTP plus Swagger one. Uh, it's something uh, we're not going to show you in the demo today. I wanted to, but I decided there were too many other things I wanted to show. But it, it's awesome to think, Instead of having to create a connector or figure out the right HTTP calls, if you just have a Swagger doc that you can reference that explains it, you paste that into the HTTP action, and it says, oh, hey, I know exactly what the capabilities of this so API are. That I Wherever do. that API sure. is running, uh, just making that extensibility and shareability and, and those things much more much more powerful is, you know, we continue to share out popular Swagger docs and those types of things. Really lightweight way to interface with a lot of different sources. Uh, and more control flow support. So in the new designer, you'll see that we'll, we uh, we will first release uh, conditional support, and then we will uh, continue on that journey to do a do until and for each first class support and scopes in inside of your logic app. Next, call workflow improvements to the designer experience. So um, along with the improvements to the to the static endpoint that we have for calling workflows. Uh, under the covers, we're actually doing that uh, for being able to do 
workflow to workflow interaction. So that's the workflows. Um, of course, today one way you can you can call another workflow is via an HP request. Uh, but we're first class in that experience with the workflow action. It's actually there today, but we're improving it, as well as giving it a uh, first class um, and kind of action support. So just as you have your managed APIs, your custom APIs that discovered, you'll see your workflows as APIs as well that you can call uh, directly from your logic. And I I, I want to make sure I'm understanding some of the workflow stuff you were talking about. Uh, I know it's a request we get. I actually just answered a forum question this week around, you know, there's some information about my workflow I want to be able to surface within my workflow, like the run ID, some of the run information. Oh, uh, that's different. Uh, different than this. Yes. Okay. So this is being able to call workflows. What you're so looking nested, at okay. is nested workflows. So what you're what you're asking for is uh, there's functions for the workflow instance itself so that you can get that information. Yes, okay. And uh, yeah, we'll just we'll leave it at that. <laughs> yes. uh, that's coming too. Yes. So add, um, add that bullet point. I apologize, Kevin. <laughs> no, it's a good clarification because other people may have had the same question. Uh, improved trigger user experience. So uh, in the in the portal, we have uh, a little uh, part so that you can see the the trigger runs. We're going to actually expand that experience so that you can um, see all the types of triggers that you can call, and for each trigger you can then uh, explicitly call a particular trigger. So we'll be we'll be having multiple trigger support for the designer, mm. being able to pick one of those triggers and run it, and then actually see the history of one of those particular triggers. So it won't be all convoluted in one box. You'll get to look at each individual trigger and have it react. Very cool. So as usual, if you have new ideas and want to vote for an idea that you really like, please go to our forum and uh, enter those ideas in. Uh, and uh, we try to be responsive and use that for prioritization. Yep, and you can, by the way, you can just go to Google or Bing and just type in Logic Apps User Voice, and it will take you straight to this link too. But uh, we do, honestly, multiple times a week we go through that. We discuss them as a team. We uh, we really do appreciate your feedback. And I would encourage you to, even if you necessarily don't have an idea you want to go submit, still go to this page and, and cast votes because uh, that's one thing. It's one thing to just have a list of, of things, but when you add your votes to it and you add, hey, I agree with this, I want to put three votes or two votes or one votes on that, that helps us make sure that we're prioritizing the right things as we continue to light features up. Right. So that's it. Sweet. Okay. Awesome. I always, I always, at this point, I always want to switch back on the camera just so they can see <laughs> how spiffy we look today. We're not matching today, though. Sometimes we, we do uh, wear the matching shirts. Okay, let's jump into the demo. Uh, and I actually, I've had this browser open for a long time, so I'm hoping it's not going to give us any timeout issues. This is the new Logic Apps Designer running inside a beautiful Ibiza, the uh, or the uh, Azure portal. We need That's, an audience. Like I know there is an applause option actually. So if you're watching the Hangout, I hope you get to get the applause. I'm going to show <laughs> you how fast this is to create a new Logic App. Now this is a Logic App and a resource group that. Uh, or I guess the resource group is a little bit older, but this is a brand new Logic App. And if, if you would used Logic Apps before, uh, we did what we can to make it a great experience, but because of those restrictions we had around API apps and having to deploy and manage your own, uh, I just hopefully want you to see how fast and, and how seamless it is to create a new Logic App in the new designer. So here's what I want to do. Let's say we've got uh, just a kind of a simple file transfer Logic App we need to, to create with some conditions. So let's say we're working with an external party or a vendor who's processing some orders for us. And because of how they want to do it, I've decided for this demo, I'm going to say when they have a new order, they're going to drop it in Dropbox for us. And we don't want our orders to stay in Dropbox. We want to potentially be able to act off of our orders, do something when certain things are in the orders, as well as we want those orders in a repository that's more meaningful to us, uh, which uh, we could be OneDrive or blah, blah, actually probably decide when we get there. So for one, you'll notice we actually have a, some newer triggers here and some more rich triggers available that are going to come out with the new designer. Things like when a new blob file is added or when a file is created in Dropbox. Um, so some more context-rich triggers for you to have things happen right on the event. So you'll notice I was just able to say Dropbox when a file is created. And I could have searched for some of the other triggers. Uh, one thing I want you to see that will be a great tool as we improve our deployments as well and making deployments easier is there's this uh, idea of a connection and you can change connections really easily. So right now I'm authenticated against my Dropbox account. You can see that there's other connections I could choose and you can you know, decide which connection you want to do. You can create new connections. So you can have multiple connections to a single source, which in this case is Dropbox. We're also really improving the selection process, whereas before 
if you want to do something like Dropbox, you had to go in there and kind of figure out what's my file path. Well, now we're kind of allowing the browse opportunity right inside the designer. So I can see right here, this is just a blank Dropbox. So I, I don't have subfolders, but I could click this arrow if I had subfolders and see what subfolders I had get straight to where I want to go uh, without having to do any of that. And it just does it for me. So there's our first step. When something is added into this Dropbox directory, I want to do something. Something else we've worked really hard to improve is conditions. Conditions right now when you're using them are powerful, uh, but you have to write the syntax and figure out everything yourself. While that's still an option and you continue to do that, we also wanna make it a nicer experience. So I want a condition right now, which is if any of my orders contain the word in the order somewhere urgent, I wanna do something. So I want to know if anything in the file content and again, you'll notice this new designer experience, instead of me having to say at actions.outputs.filecontent, right here I can easily see, hey, look, I've got file content, file path, file name. In this case, I care about file content. Uh, and it's doing all the rest of the magic for you. And we can still switch to code view and you can see the code view is doing all that too. And I wanna know if the file content contains the value urgent. So this is an urgent order, we will say. And if the answer is yes, if it contains an urgent order, I actually want to send myself an email with some information about the order so I can act on it. So you'll notice we have some new options here. I'm going to go ahead and send an email with Outlook. And you'll notice I have that connection Dude, again. That was that. Wasn't it though? Like see how fast I'm doing this? Like honestly, if this is a blank logic app, like a new resource, I'm not spinning up anything and this is all going. Uh, so let's say you have an urgent order. And I want to include the file name in there. So I can just do that. That's going to be the subject. What, string interpolation? Boom. Done. Uh, but <laughs> this is good. See, here's my applause. This is all we need. Will you come to all my demos, Kevin? Uh, and let's say the urgent order is, uh, let's do the file content. Uh, and let's go ahead and send the email to myself. And that is my email. You are all more than welcome to send me questions, feedback, or anything around Logic Apps. That is my real email. Uh, and then let's add an action, and this is actually going to bridge or merge this fork. So if there was something I wanted to do if it wasn't urgent, uh, in this case for all files, let's actually just create a file in blob, right? Let's say I actually want to store all my stuff in blob. So I'm going to go ahead and create a blob, and I've got a file in here called demo, and I just want the file name to be the file name and the file content to be the file content. So you can see now here's the full flow, and I can collapse these if I want to make this a little bit easier to see. What collapsible cards? Boom. So my simple logic app is now, when a file is created, I've got that condition if it's urgent. If yes, send an email, and regardless for anything, just create the file, right? And uh, I actually am going to switch over to code view so you can see this code view that you might have been familiar. There are some schema changes that you might notice as I, as I go through this. Actually, I wasn't planning on doing this. But you see that it's created all those things around conditions and actions. Here's the condition to merge it back together. Uh, here's my trigger. All those things were created for me. So I can go ahead and save this logic app. What and it did save. Yeah. Oh, that's right. It's much cleaner, too. Uh, you notice the connections are much more easier to understand and therefore also Those much easier to deploy. Gone. Yep. Uh, all this cool stuff. That's the whole logic app definition. I mean, it's still JSON-y. You've got to kind of get used to it, which if you want to, you can. It's, it's honestly much simpler, though. Uh, so there's my app. So let's go ahead and do this now. Uh, blog. Oh, I've got an order here, which I hope you can see this. This is urgent. That is the order. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to drop this into my Dropbox. Uh, and it's going to pick that up. And it will send me an email and add that to Blob. I'm actually, I've learned from sad experience, though, uh, that I should never actually open up my Outlook and show my inbox because I don't know exactly what's there. Uh, so I will go ahead and open up Outlook on my phone and tell you, I guess I could switch back to the camera. Now while I do that, so I can show you on my phone that I just got an email. Here, let me stop the screen sharing. You could have shown the uh, run. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And you could have seen the run. Uh, here is, <laughs> I'll show you. I got a wonderful email that says, the subject is order received, order a.txt, and it says receive this ur order, this is urgent. Okay, so that quickly I was able to create a logic app, run an ad logic app. Kevin was right, I could have gone and shown you the debug steps, which are similar to the current designer today. Uh, that is the new designer that was all in the Azure portal. It's all there doing some really powerful things. Uh, as Kevin mentioned, we are working very hard to validate end-to-end -end scenarios, do everything we can to get this out into your hands as soon as possible. It is coming in the coming weeks. If we're at the point where we can do demos like that, where 
We didn't have to do smoke and mirrors. That was running live in Azure. It, it's close. Uh, so we're really excited to share that with you when it comes. Uh, as we roll out this new architecture with the API apps changes, uh, when you start using the new designer, there will be features that we continue to roll up and pop up and light up over the coming weeks and months. Uh, so continue the feedback open with us, and we're going to make sure that we do everything we can to uh, let you experience some of the amazing things that this new Logic App Designer lets you do. Because uh, we really are focused super strong on, we want to make these really easy to manage. We want to make these really easy to deploy. We want to make these really easy to build. And no longer when you need to move orders from one spot to another and map different values, do you need to go take eight hours of training on a product. We want anyone to be able to integrate in their business scenarios uh, within five minutes, right? Like five minutes to wow is, is what we say over here. Okay, on that, five minutes. Yeah, five, yeah, that's true. That demo wasn't very long, right? And I didn't have to spin anything up. Um, the uh, one thing I will notice, and then we'll go into Q&A, and this is probably a question. It's a question we got an email, which is, we're, if you're using the current designer, so the designer that's not the flashy one that's coming soon, right? Uh, and the API apps model changed. They, they switched how the API apps, they improved it a lot. You no longer need gateways. You no longer need those Zumo tokens, which is great if you had to work with those before. Uh, they're now just embedded directly within an Azure web app. Uh, but there are some questions where people say, hey, I've created this new web app or this API app, uh, and now when I'm in the Logic Apps Designer, it's not showing up on the right like it used to. Uh, we know that. We're working hard that they will show up, right, and you'll be able to use them. Uh, when we get over to the new designer. For now, there's a blog post that Steven Siciliano on our team, who's been here before, it wrote. Uh, I did a short URL. I'll actually probably annotate this YouTube page. But if you go to aka.ms slash logic apps API, one word, logic apps API, uh, that will direct you straight to Steven's link where he talks about, hey, you can still access your custom APIs. You can still recreate the internal permissions model where you're only allowing logic apps to authenticate against your API so you don't have to open publicly. It's all still possible. Uh, so follow that blog post for now. And then as we continue to roll out these changes, uh, as Kevin mentioned, where you'll have those managed APIs, things will just integrate natively uh, with the designers. We continue to build that out. Anything else? I think that's it. OK, Q and Here we go. This actually isn't a question. I'm going to select it, though. So uh, selecting the question. Uh, this is awesome, and thank you. That is great to hear. I'm glad. <laughs> okay. All right. Can we have more than one action per condition branch? That's what I was telling you to show. Oh, so just, what was that? Just put a plus underneath the. Oh, right. Yeah. So I could build out like yes. jink, 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 right, yes. and jink, and, and do this. Yes, yes, you can. That's true. Yes. Yeah, so I, could, I wanted to show that we can merge them too. But yes, yeah. good question. Uh, you can have more than one action per condition branch, and just like today as well. You could have conditions where I want these things to go at the same time in code view, right? And then you can, the same things you can do today, you can do then. It was uh, much harder to model. In the previous it was in the previous the designer time. with the arrows and everyone's doing it. Okay. About managed APIs, how will all that affect licensing is the next question. Uh, There's only licensing issues with the some of the on-prem ones. Right. And we're not. That's, that's yeah. not part of the managed API set yet. Right, yes. Uh, so good question. Uh, we're working with each of these SaaS providers to figure out the right licensing models for the right things. Uh, but for now, there's no effect on, on, on licensing. Uh, good question. OK. And then do we have some guidance about the throttle limits anywhere? Uh, the, I believe in the app the platform page. billing page. That's right, pricing. Yeah. pricing. Yeah. Uh, and you, when you first go to the app platform billing page, there's like a summary view, and you might not see it there, but there's right. a link that says like show me full details, That's right. and you'll be able to see like for standard, here's how many calls per you know day you can get, and for premium, here's how many calls per day you can get. Um, all right, and then I had let me check Twitter really quick. So that was all the questions on Google Hangout. Uh, let's check Twitter really quick to make sure we didn't miss anything there. And then I did have some in an email. Mind blown, awesome webcast. The hosts are very attractive. That actually, no one tweeted that. But you can <laughs> if you want to, and I'll probably retweet it. Uh, let's see. I'm not seeing any questions. Oh, uh, where can I post questions? So the person who tweeted where you can post questions, you can tweet your question. And if I see it in the next 30 seconds, I'll answer. And if not, we'll, we're always on Twitter. Uh, actually, one of the questions we got, so someone did email in to logicappsio at microsoft.com. Uh, and they asked where the best place to contact us is. Any of these places, Twitter, logicapps.io at microsoft.com, we monitor daily. 
Uh, forum wise, the best forum to go to is the MSDN Logic Apps Forum. Uh, you can Google or Bing that uh, and you will see it. Uh, we do pay attention to Stack Overflow, but the biggest community between our partners, the engineering team, they're all on this MSDN Logic Apps Forum page. Uh, I would strongly recommend as you continue to get questions, um, that is the best place to post them uh, in a forum place. All right, and let me, oh, and we did get a, will custom API apps require API management? Uh, no, they won't require API management. It's an amazing service. There's amazing things that it can do to so give you the, some free things. And the new designer, uh, that, that we'll be releasing. If you have a uh, custom API, we will automatically discover, if that's in your subscription, we will automatically discover your web app as long as it has that API definition. Mm -hmm. We'll discover it. Doesn't, it has nothing to do with the API management. Right, yeah, with the API management offering. Good, good question. Yeah, there's, just, there's, a, there's a parameter in the web app itself, and you can actually see it today, uh, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah if you go into a web app and you click properties, uh, there's, a, there's an option under the API section that says API definition. As long as you have that set to where your API definition is, uh, it will just automatically be discovered whether or not it's going through API uh, management, the Azure service, uh, which again is a, I mean, I, I really, if you're doing APIs at a large scale, I'd recommend that service irregardless, but it is not a requirement. Okay, we got more questions. This is actually the most questions we ever got. Yeah, so people are paying attention. Okay, uh, let's see. I didn't notice a Zoom button on the designer. Will that be there? Actually, the I didn't show you the, there might not be a Zoom button, but it's actually a more responsive designer. So even just Control Plus works to do it. Uh, I don't know if the Zoom in or out, that's good feedback as you start to use it. Uh, but as before, where you did like Control Plus and you actually zoomed in the, and I apologize too. Uh, usually I change my resolution for these webcasts uh, because you are watching this on potentially a small YouTube screen. Um, but yes, there is no zoom in out button right now. It is more responsive, just the, the CSS and everything we've written so that your browser settings around how you zoom it will, will format it better. Uh, but if that's something that you notice that you want, again, let us know and, and that's something that we can work on. Um, how easy will it be to inject a new step in the middle of an existing Logic App workflow? Let me actually see, is that? Okay, oh. yeah, okay, I wanted, I'm not showing my screen. That would have been a great demo. Oh, dude. So what I did, I forgot I'm not showing my screen, uh, is I dragged my email connector and I put it right underneath my trigger. I just drag and drop, right? Like that, that cool technique that, that we invented back in 1980, whatever. Uh, but you can drag and drop, add things wherever, rearrange your order, uh, all without having to touch code view. I wish they would have seen that because yeah. Kevin saw it was magical. Uh, so great question is something we wanted to make easier, and you can do that. Um, so let's see. Inject a new step. Uh, any ETA on when this goes into preview? Soon. Very soon. Soon. Coming weeks. Um, we're, we're just doing some validation, like I said, testing out, making sure we get as many bugs out as we can, and then we'll get it into your hands uh, ASAP. So. Pay attention, and if you want up to the minute updates, best places to go, follow us on Twitter, at LogicApps.io. I guarantee you the second that we click deploy live, we will be letting you know uh, as soon as we can. Uh, where would we be able to see the webhook endpoint related configuration in the portal? That's a great question. Um, oh, for the webhooks, that's right. And that actually is a good clarification. So to do a webhook trigger, uh, when we, when we introduce the new trigger blade that I was talking about, mm. we'll actually post the uh, SAS URLs in there so you can actually copy paste those. But in the REST API, if you go to your workflow definition, workflow slash workflow definition, triggers, trigger, then you do a post against list uh, endpoint URL, then you'll get that SAS URL back. That's right. And does that will that work in the current design or will that only light up when we move over to this new design? No, the, the API is available today. Okay, but in the new designer, uh, we'll in the coming weeks we'll we'll have a trigger blade we can just do within, the portal. within yeah. the portal. Yeah, so there's service. API calls that you can do today, yeah. part of the managed API to do that. Uh, but yeah, as Kevin mentioned, we'll we'll provide that in portal experience, portal experience. Uh, but like I said, I was playing with that yesterday. Okay, and that is the new set of questions. So let me make sure. Let's see if uh, we got some of those things uh, require API management. We answer. Uh, what about repeat feature? Any change? Uh, small change in that in the new designer, the new schema, it is now called for each. for each. Functionally, though, no change. Correct? 
yeah, I mean, it, there because there's there's you know through the language we have repeat repeat item something. Oh, right. Different for those things, but yes, yeah. yes, it functionally do the same. Yes, so it will be there. Um, yes, good question. And some of these things as well, you'll notice as you start creating launch gaps in the new designer, where there were scenarios before where you were always doing a repeat because you were working with an array. We actually will figure that out and we'll start putting in the for each and helping you do it for you. Uh, I noticed as I was using it some yesterday and the other day, which is nice. So you don't, I mean, there's some things where people would get an array output from SQL in the very next step, unless they did a repeat, there was nothing much they could do with it. We understand that those things will come up. And so in those instances, we say, hey, you probably want to do a for each. Uh, we help you do that. Um, okay. Uh, what will be the conversion process from the existing designer to the new designer? We we will we will provide uh, a button to help you um, make that transition easier. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there'll be a lot of content as we get closer. We've been we've been authoring a lot of content to help with some of those schema changes to let you know. Here's all the things that you would need to do if you want to migrate an existing logic app into the new designer. We'll provide some tools uh, potentially as well. If there's interest, I'd love to know on this part. We've talked about even having a webcast where we go through. An existing logic app designer and we show you all the things and and how quickly you can get into the new stuff so for that particular too if there's other content that would be valuable to you let us know um, has the marketplace story changed and what's the current state and plan for monetizing api apps anything oh. you want to mention on this sure I mean, that's that's public though yeah so there we are yeah. working with the azure team on what's called the azure certified program uh, where we are working to make it so that if you have an API app that you want to make available to other users of Logic Apps, that you can do that. Uh, whether you host the API, maybe you maybe you have an API that you're hosting in your own website or through your own server or whatever, a way for you to point users to that within the designer, or if you want to bring uh, a, a web app that people can use. Uh, you can start applying for that today, and we have a database where we're continuing to do that. We're, we're, we're lighting up all the things to make it happen, but it's definitely a story that is alive and well. Uh, I don't have the link with me right now, but I believe if you just go into Google or Bing, the one of your choice, I'll test this right now, and you type in Azure Certified, uh, even just Azure Certified. Yeah, so if you go, let me make sure that's right. So I'm on Bing right now, and I typed in Azure Certified. That's right, so if you go to, if you type in Azure Certified, it's the first link, the actual URL is azure.microsoft.com slash marketplace slash partner dash program and i can tweet that out as well uh, but there's a big green button that says apply now for the azure certified program uh, you can go ahead and click that there's options for i want to build a logic app api uh, and you fill out some information about the type of service you're interested in doing and that lets us know and as we continue to get further along we can contact you and say okay here's the things we need from you we need to do some validation steps obviously to make sure that you're not you know submitting something that, that doesn't work uh, but that's a great question, uh, and I would encourage you, if you're interested in that, to to apply at that Azure Partner Program portal. Uh, okay, I think that's it. Um, great, that was a really good questions. I, I'm great to see that we've got uh, interaction and, and good viewers. And again, thank you very much to the community as well. I was on parental leave through uh, December with uh, my new baby boy, but I was very impressed as I would go onto the forums or onto Twitter and into blogs seeing people continue to be active to share how they're using logic apps there's cool stuff being posted all the time or how people are using it with iot how people are using it with transforms how people are using it with soap uh, it's awesome to see the community get involved i really appreciate it we love doing this webcast we love working on these things i wish we could always come to you and say this is ready for you to play with today but we do want to make sure that it's a great experience for you and we've got some of the the kinks worked out for you uh, but we're working very hard so continue to participate let us know on, on Twitter. Follow us on, on YouTube, actually, and, and this will alert you for when we do our next webcast next. Uh, and that, that is it. All right. Great. Thanks, everyone.